lots of buildings of historical interest, which is nice. Good morning. A lovely morning. Uh, and I'm in Yule for a little bit of a history tour around Yule. So I'm going to take you around, show you some of the uh, sites, um, some of the history, all local, and uh, yeah, blue sky, let's do this. Yule comes from the old English, I think it's Ewal, Ewal, which means uh, water or spring. There's a geological line between the clay of the London Basin and the chalk of the North Downs. So we pass right through it. Even the old Roman uh, Stain Street runs through the village. Well, site detour. It's very interesting, yeah. That's why there's uh, spring settlements here. And I've said in other videos, um, ancient man settled in these areas because of the natural springs. This is the pond that goes out into the Hogsmill River. This is great. Look at this part of our industrial past. But you can imagine 100 years ago this being a completely rural area, completely rural. The famous diarist Samuel Pepys came to Yule. He pronounced it actually in back then Yole, Y-O-W-E-L-L. -L. And it's in his diaries, I think between 1663 and 1665. Bright sun. Back here. Uh, Bourne Hall Lodge built by the Doggate as a lodge for the Tor family of Oldbourne Hall, circa 1860. So this is the old jail, known as the Watch House. A lot of these villages had these little lock-ups for um, people who were either drunk and the police in the next morning or waiting to see the magistrate the next day. Apparently people try to feed, I think this is a bit of folklore, try to feed cider through to the inmates but couldn't the bath too small so just fed it through with a little oh, cup. <laughs> I'd actually like to find some of the other lockups in uh, Surrey. Quite interesting, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> Old lockup, okay. Lots of buildings of historical interest, which is nice. Stuff on here, building of historical interest. But the actual main high street actually is. Um, let's quit looking here. I did not know this was here. St Michael's Church, a music room for the Glens. This building was previously a malt house rebuilt in 1820. Oh wow, okay. Of course, just over the road is where the old Nonsuch Palace used to be, Henry VIII's Grand Palace, which was knocked down to pay off debts. The Lacey Castle Main. And um, yeah, that's on a previous video. Um, which I'll link below. Yeah, it's a very, very historic site here. So many um, heritage plaques, which is more than I thought, actually. So, uh, yeah. Here's another one. The Well House, built 1700, the final home of Sir Arthur and Margaret Glynn from 1902 to 1946. Lovely old house, that's Georgian. Here we are at Yule Castle. 
This is a school now. Built in uh, 1814. Just walking along this little pathway, I think it's Vicarage Walk it's called. This goes up to the um, up to the A24. Yeah. Interestingly, I was reading that apparently there are underground tunnels that were put here around the time of the Civil War. How true that is, I don't know. Um, and it comes out by one of the shops on West Street. Um, I have to look into that further, that would be quite interesting. This goes down quite a way. One thing that has disappointed me, that the main high street is really looking worse for wear. I never remember that sort of 10 years ago, but it looks really shabby considering there's so many historic houses um, along there. It's always workmen, when you're trying to film, it's always workmen doing something, just one of those things. Um, but Yule is part of the London Loop, a big uh, walk uh, that uh, circumnavigates London. Filmed a scene for my movie Ravenswood, my comedy Ravenswood right here, with Mark and Dodie. <laughs> There's been a church dedicated to St Mary on this site since about the 13th century. The one there at the moment is an, built in the 1800s. Because the chap apparently, I don't know how true this is, who lived in the manor house, got so annoyed with all the practitioners and all their carts and their horses coming to church, it disturbed the peace for him. So he knocked down the old church and moved it over couple of hundred yards uh, that way. That can't be true. So this is all that's left of the old church is actually just the tower. It's very bizarre having a tower of an old church in the same plot as the new church. But yeah, amazing ruin. As it's a ruin you don't know how structurally sound it is but it seems to be home to lots of pigeons now. They seem to be uh, quite happy up there. So the new church was dedicated in 1848. It stands just by the old London Road. So all around here is so historic. You know, we're going back to prehistory here, absolute prehistory. Well, I'd love to get in that ruin, wouldn't that be great? Really full of a. Uh, pigeon poo but still fascinating to explore. I don't know if anyone ever goes in there anymore. Probably not because it's probably structurally unsafe. But if it started falling down I think people would, would realise. Let's have a quick look at the new church. Come on. So this is the new church in the 1800s, 1840s. You can go in, but um, there's people in there working and probably praying as it's a church. So I'll, I'll leave them to it. I mean, it's a modern church-ish. Interestingly, uh, St Mary's, there is a plague pit somewhere in the grounds here of um, unfortunate children, I'm afraid. Um, from the pandemic back in the 1300s um, which also leads to some of the paranormal claims of you all now being a paranormal investigator uh, I'm very much interested in what people see and what people see but I think this is probably more folklore but I'm going to read you something from I'm sorry this is a terrible plug from my book Paranormal Surrey with the horrible new font they've done in the Stranger Things font which I don't care for much but hey um, but yeah, so Mary the Virgin has a play pit of unfortunate children who were victims of the tragic pandemic from centuries ago and are said to haunt, don't like the word haunt, uh, this plot where they were buried. Also people can hear the rattling of um, stagecoach outside the Will in the Fourth Inn, which I think is no longer there and being renovated. And a male figure that resides at the, in the old village jail, the one we went to earlier. Um, but I think these are probably all just folklore. I don't think anyone's haunted, it's everywhere if it exists, come on. Um, 
One of the houses that dates back to the 16th century is allegedly haunted by a female spirit called Agnes. Yeah, how do they know these names? But yeah, um, but if you want to know some of the um, hauntings, <clears throat> or sorry, is my book. Um, but yeah, play pits I find really sad, really, really sad. Um, but I don't think we should, people should go looking for them. I think they should be left as they are, out of respect. I didn't know that. The churchyard goes across the road. A quick look actually. Um, St Mary's Churchyard. Oh, it's nice to be out on a warm November day. A little bit of sun flare there, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's lovely. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks very much for joining me for a little trip around Yule. I'm sure I've forgotten things. If I have, please let me know. If you're watching on YouTube, please comment, subscribe, like. That'd be much appreciated. Um, must do some more videos around our local area. Um, I'll link my two ancient owl episodes of Kosh Alton and Cheen down below. I did a few years back um, also. But yeah, it's been great. Thanks very much. And uh, enjoy the day, depending on when you're watching this. All right, take care. Good seeing you.